Rugby. A game in my eyes, which is renowned for its ferocious tackles, timely ball handling, passionate fans, terrifying muscles, and some suspiciously short shorts. Since the day of football was picked up by a pupil at rugby school to give birth to the origins of the sport, the game has been shaped by masculinity and testosterone in its purest form. So, what do you imagine when you picture women playing the game? Terrifying tribeswomen throwing around their burning bras, wanting to tear down villages and burn men at the stake? <laughs> well, obviously not. If you decide to scroll through rugby forums, you're likely to come across some of the sexist comments that I've read. But you will also regain faith to see men and women denouncing this misogyny. Now, I've spoken with professional rugby players, coaches and true rugby fans over the years, and I've found it difficult to imagine who actually sits down to write such sexist material. All I've ever heard from the professionals and genuine fans is the utmost respect for the women's game. If a man said I play rugby, you wouldn't go contact. <laughs> yeah, would you? Like I'll just spit touch. Yeah. My name is Katie Conn, and I want to tackle the stereotypes that happen when you play women's rugby and find out what happens when you play a traditional masculine sport, but this time owning it as women. I always wanted to do rugby, but it was always my brother that got to do it and not me. We went to like family games together, but my brother was the one that got to play rugby. What made you want to be the social sec of women's rugby? Me and Martha are best mates, so we were like, it'd be just really fun to do together. The yin and yang, the peanut butter to my jelly, the cheese to my pickle. What would you describe is the general vibe of women's rugby. Okay. Feminism, welcoming everybody, any kind of girl. What is and then the stereotypical rugby girl? Aggressive, which is like fantastic. That's what's great about us is we have like every kind of woman. That stereotype can actually be like the most amazing thing ever. But then there's girls that don't perhaps meet the stereotype, which is also cool. Like no matter what happens on the pitch, like we're always friends afterwards and we never like bitch and moan at each other. It's university rugby at the end of the day. It's not the be all and end all. <laughs> I'm second row. Second row. What number is that? Four or five. I'm very versatile. Ooh. Both. <laughs> I've always like had rugby around in the house and like I used to coach mini rugby when I was growing up. So I kind of understood the game and I would watch um, Ulster matches. Right. So Ulster's my local That's team. team. My family are already into rugby like you, but I never really cared about it. <laughs> Just because it never really seemed like my thing, and then um, so I'm in my third year, but I'm a rugby pressure. Right. So I basically decided I wanted to play a sport, and I was like, I'm too aggressive for like any sport. <laughs> my mum, shout out to Bryony Con, is the biggest sport watching fiend I have ever met. Well done, Dolly. She went to listen to an England rugby rules talk, and she discovered that the female lineswoman receives sexist abuse from spectators in the crowds. The female refs, the female touch judges and whatnot that I've spoken to have generally said the players are the respectful ones, like they have no issue. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, other than that, they occasionally get called sir because most refs are male, so the ref will go, oh sorry sir, oh miss, um, uh, oh, and like don't really know what to say, but other, they're super, super respectful and then you look at the, and it, but it's the crowds that tend to be the ones that'll make the comments. Ireland just advertised a coaching position for their national women's team. Right. Which which is a part-time position. These women are all capable of, they're all world-class standards. I wouldn't say that it's the same as men's game. Right. Women don't start playing when they're four years old and don't have the amount of money, time, so women everything. women to men. And yeah. Like, I think different. that's a thing, like, just yeah. igno the acknowledge the differences. We don't play the same. In some ways, it's a more, a sort of more old-fashioned and more pure form of the sport because we don't, we aren't like bulky, we can't just throw our weight around. It's a kind of sport that's just been viewed through the male gaze. I think it's kind of damaging for boys as well, the fact that like this, I think the sport can sometimes just inflict this idea of masculinity on yeah, boys from yeah. like a very young age. The fact that like yeah. Gareth, is it Gareth Thomas found it so hard to come out as a gay in a rugby world because of this idea of masculinity. And Nigel Owens, is, like, yeah. story about like how out of place he felt being gay. And then yeah, exactly. Other side of things, when you're in women's rugby, everyone assumes that everyone in the team must be gay. Yeah. Like, we're all just a bunch of big letters. Like, that's that. Really <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I had a hockey player say, oh, I've heard all the rugby girls are gay. I was like, you know that's your stereotype, right? <laughs> he was like, uh, oh, yeah, who's your sponsor? Lesbians are us. I was like, to <laughs> 
Are you feeling like a little nervous now? What's the general yeah. vibe of the team? I wear a scrum cap and that's part of my thing. It's like, once the scrum cap goes on, I'm, I'm in the zone. It's become a psychological thing because I only wear it during matches, really. Oh, fair. So it's like, once this is on, this is serious yeah. business. My dad used to play, so he taught me to play when I was about six. But the whole family played rugby, so because right. I'm Welsh. What's the Welsh women's rugby like? Um, I will give an honest answer here. It's, it's good, but it's not brilliant. They don't make it professional, they don't pay them. I come from a school that constantly said girls couldn't play rugby. In my secondary school, from year 7 to year 11, I've been saying, like, can we do rugby, can we do rugby? And they yeah. said, no, no, like, you're girls, you can't play rugby. I, I've lost count of the number of times when I've said I play rugby, people have said, are you a lesbian then? And it's like... Really? Yeah, that's that's positive. That just makes me that's... laugh these days. It's like, oh, do you like to shag women then? I'm like, the answer is yes, but, um, but that has nothing to do with why I enjoy <laughs> playing you. rugby. I do like doing that. <laughs> when I was watching the women's hacker in the World Cup last summer, I was shook. It was so intense. I've grown up seeing this dramatic ritual performed by the New Zealand men's side, and it was so shrill and terrifying to watch when women took it in their stride. Yeah. Everybody warmed up. Yeah. It's a wet day. I keep saying it, sympathetic. Short passes. We love our team. We want them to catch the ball. <laughs> can we do this? Yes! yes! We can. One, One, two, three, can Watching the game, I was in awe. These girls weren't afraid to get knocked around, bring the opposition down, but most importantly, they brought each other up and supported one another. The sisterhood was in full swing and it was incredibly empowering when, when to watch. When a rock goes down on their side, they're very quick to pass it out. Their game is passing it out. Their forwards can't take our forwards. Hell, I think I took one of the forwards. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Gloria, Lana, yeah. go alone into a rock with three of their forwards in it and clear it out. Our oh, defence was fabulous. Got so much better towards the end, guys. That was yeah. so good. Yeah. Every sure. match we can defend, no. Yeah. To be fair, no like... question about it. So the game was over, but it didn't stop there. The team and the opposition came together at the end of the game for some sportsmanship drinks and recognition of standout players. Unique to the day, it was then time to take pictures for the girls' 2018 Rugby Naked calendar. The charity we're supporting to this Naked calendar is called My Body Back. I know, it's all about like women reclaiming their bodies after sexual harassment, sexual assault and rape, which is something as women like obviously sexual politics are things we face like face us as women and we thought it's a nice charity to do a naked character for because like owning your own body like yeah. reclaiming that back and you know celebrating all different shapes and sizes we're not doing like uh, a calendar that's for men it's for us it's for our bodies it's for us as women to like you know show all of our flaws show our different shapes race age and ethnicity like religion it doesn't matter it's all just us and i think okay. that kind of speaks a lot about our rugby team in general It was a Wednesday, which means, generally, one thing at university, sports socials. And this theme was Disney, and obviously glitter. Well, tonight is a freshers night, so we are getting our little newbies together, and we are just putting them through their paces a bit, okay. getting them introduced to the club, introduced to the girls. It's, this night's all about fun, though. We're having a okay. good time. wise fabulous. Their excitement. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Essentially, they had to go and steal a rugby boy's uh, polo shirt as one of their challenges, and the little freshling managed to do it. All well on her. So, can you tell me what you're drinking right now? Um, Explain exactly what is in that drink. They exactly. Need to do. <laughs> so, um, I, I, originally the name is called a snake bite. Right. Um, most universities have it. It is a concoction of blackcurrant squash, <laughs> half cider. It's a cocktail. It's a cocktail. It's a rugby cocktail. Um, a rugby um, cocktail. Cider and beer and <laughs> squash. Because you've got to be healthy. You've got to get those vitamins. Go on, That's no. how you use dress. Poppy, do you fancy down in that pint? The rest of it on camera. I can't jump high. And when we drink with Poppy, she gets it down in eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go!
decent picture to round it off, don't I? So, this is where I stopped the footage going any further because from that moment on, the night became, let's just say, a little bit of a blur. So, in my eyes, the night finished there and let's rewind back to the uh, more sophisticated aspects of the evening. I think for rugby particularly, I just see all these girls on the pitch and I just see how strong they are. Yeah. And to play in a sport that is so male dominated, it's just amazing. Yeah. Like the aggression, the fight, you know, everything. Like we can like I think just here you can see, like we can be girly, we can be girls, you know, we can dress up, we can wear glitter. Yeah. You know, they're beautiful girls. But then we can also be the type of girls who when we've gotta get things done, we'll get them done. Shauna Brown, an England player, has this to say about her sport. It's also about encouraging women. You don't have to look a certain way to play rugby. When we're out and we say that we're rugby players, some people will say, what? All of you? Then they point at the wingers and go, even them? They're good looking. Women's rugby is a force to be reckoned with. And it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know how these incredibly strong, fierce and beautiful women gel as a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I definitely still maintain that I would run a mile away if someone asked me to put on some studs and tackle someone twice my size. But the fact these girls get stuck in and love doing just that, well, it makes me envy and worship them all the more.